Jay works in a logistics department and has this lookup question where he wants to show the three transporters with the lowest prices. If this is our lookup table, we need to match the from and to location, then jump over to the correct vehicle size, in this case 19 feet, and we need to get the three lowest and deliver the transporter name and the three lowest values. And if we change an input, we want our solution to instantly update and include duplicates if there's a tie for third. Now I'm going to show you how to create this amazing lookup solution using Microsoft 365. If you don't have Microsoft 365, I already have a video that shows how to extract the top five numbers and names, including ties or duplicates. So you can go check out that video. You can also download the Excel workbook and check out the formulas that we would use in a non-Microsoft 365 version. The first thing we have to do before we even extract the values is find the third smallest value that meets all these conditions. So we're going to look up this column first, equals xlookup. And I need to look up 19 feet, comma. And the lookup array are the field names above the numbers. Now xlookup will look this up and get the second position, comma. And because in the return array, we're not just going to give it one row, we're going to give it a bunch of rows. That means when it finds a match in the second position, xlookup will return the entire column. When I hit Enter, it returns the entire column. Now we need to filter this column based on these two conditions. So we we'll use the filter function. That's the array to filter, comma. And we have to build a true, false, or 0, 1 logical array to tell filter how to filter. So in parentheses, I'll take from, are you equal to, whatever's in that cell, close parentheses. That'll deliver trues and falses. And we'll multiply by the two column. Are you equal to, whatever's there, close parentheses. In the include, if I hit the F9 key, that's the array that tells filter how to filter. Now notice there's semicolons. That means it's filtering the rows. Control Z, close parentheses. And now when I hit Enter, I get all the values that match those conditions. But now I want just the third smallest. So we can use the small function. That whole array, comma, with a K of 3, now it can pick out and return the hurdle for us. That means in our logical test over here, we could say less than or equal to this hurdle. So if there's duplicates, they'll be included. Now the cool thing about this formula we're going to create is we'll first filter the rows, and then we'll filter the columns to get just the two columns we want. And then we'll sort ascending. Now I'm going to use the same formula element here to look up that column. And I'm going to need both of those logical tests. So I'm going to cheat and copy Control C, equal sign Control V. Now from the 19 foot column, I need to ask how many are less than or equal to 140. So in parentheses, I'll add a couple spaces just to visually make it easier to see. Now that's the formula element that's looking up the 19-foot values. And I need to ask how many of you are less than or equal to whatever that hurdle is. Now if I close parentheses, if I highlight just this, F9, that gives me trues and falses, Control Z. But this is going to end up inside a filter. So we need the other two tests. And when you use multiplication, that simulates an AND logical test. Only when there's a true here. And a true here is the result a true. Now, it actually doesn't come out as true false. Anytime you use a math operator on, for example, the trues and falses from that, once you do a math operator, true times true becomes 1. Now, we're only going to get resulting ones when there's true, true, and true. If I hit the F9 key, there's the vertical array. Semicolons mean row. 
of trues and falses. So the ones mean those are the four rows. Control-Z, actually, I can hit Enter, and you can see that's what's going to tell Filter which rows to get. So in the top cell, we'll use Filter. And watch this. There's a parentheses already there. When I hit Tab, the Filter function just stole it. So I want to make sure and type a parentheses for Filter. And then we want as the array, the entire table, the inside part of the lookup table, comma. And there's the include. Close parentheses and Enter. So the first part is done. We filtered rows. Now we need the first one and the ninth one. And notice the field names are here. And very carefully, that field name is linked down here. So when we change it, the field name will change up here. And actually, I'll do the array part that's going to filter the columns down here so we can see that it's not semicolons, but it's going to be commas. And we'll get a filtered range across the columns. We want to look up using X match. And really, I want to look up these two values and find those. But I need the array to be the same size as these field names. So I'm going to say, hey, look up all of those values, comma, within those two values. Now, the only possibilities are 1 and 2 as positions. So close parentheses. I could hit the F9 key. Notice the commas. Because they're commas, they'll tell the filter function to filter columns. Now, I'm only interested in the number. So Control-Z is number. And we can hit Enter, and we can see the trues and falses. Now, I'll leave that there as a trail. Control-C, Enter. Up in the top cell, F2. And we're going to do a second filter to filter columns. There's the entire array, comma. And it's this include, Control V, that's going to be given trues and falses separated by commas. And that's what tells filter to return just those two columns. And now if I come over and change this, and we could change to 14 foot. Everything's working. Now, what if we choose YY? Well, there's only one WWYY. And the num error is coming because there isn't a third smallest. So here's bonus number one. In the K argument, we're going to use the if function and the logical test. We'll actually count how many records have the from and to. And we'll say, are you less than whatever hurdle we put here? If you are less than, then use the actual count. Otherwise, use that hurdle number that we typed in. And so now we get one record. I change it back to ZZ. It's working. Now here's bonus number two. Anytime in Microsoft 365 Excel you have repeating formula elements like we have right here, we can use the let function. That way we run that formula element one time, and then it's used throughout the formula. So now in the k argument, we have let, where that's the name of the variable. That's the formula element. And then our calculation is if the variable is less than the hurdle, then use the variable. Otherwise, go back to the hurdle. And we better close this off and hit Enter. Go back to YY. Bam! It's all working. Now, the last thing we want to do is sort by this second 19-foot column. So in front of Filter Filter, we'll use Sort. There's the array. And we'll use that second argument comma, to say which column we want to sort by, 2. The default is ascending, so that's all we need. When I hit Enter, there it is, smallest to biggest. And if we change the input, it's all working. All right, that was a little fun with XLOOKUP, FILTER, LET, and old school count ifs and small. And up here, we did sort, filter, filter with an X lookup and even an is number and X match. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And we'll see you next video.